Do you believe that the sum total of these policies will lead to more illegal immigration? I do not, and I would be guided by facts and evidence okay. about Here are the facts. So 178% uh, increase in single adults coming across the border this time, this year versus last. 50% increase in unaccompanied minors. So the fact that you don't see this as a problem is very disturbing. As you know, it's not a question of being hurt. We're all big boys, and I don't see too many girls here, but big boys uh, who get attacked all the time. But it's important that we make the attacks expressing Second. our differences on policy, and that we don't need to make personal attacks no matter what view somebody may hold. So can we assume that as the director of the OMB, we're going to see a different approach if you are uh, appointed than you have uh, taken at the uh, cap? Absolutely. And I would say, you know, social media does um, lead to too many personal comments, and my approach will be radically different. Here's what's happened thus far in the first three weeks. We stopped building the wall. We've halted deportations. We canceled Remain in Mexico policy, withdrew from asylum agreements with Triangle Nations, we eliminated advanced vetting for terrorists, reinstated catch and release. Uh, we're can uh, considering canceling the public charge rule. We're ending travel restrictions with uh, countries with national security concerns. Do you believe that the sum total of these policies will lead to more illegal immigration? I do not, and I would be guided by facts and evidence okay. about Okay, here are the facts. So 178% uh, increase in single adults coming across the border this time this year versus last, 50% increase in unaccompanied minors. So the fact that you don't see this as a problem is very disturbing. I have a letter in front of me from, as I'm sure you have seen, a number of Republican members of the House concerned about some of the things you said as uh, the head of CAP. But of course, your attacks were not just made against Republicans. Mm -hmm. There were vicious attacks made against uh, progressives. Uh, people who I have worked with, me personally. So as you um, come before this committee to assume a very important role in the United States government uh, at a time when we need serious work on serious issues and not personal attacks on anybody, whether they're on the left or the right, can you reflect a little bit about some of your decisions and the personal statements that you have made in recent years? Yes, Senator, I really appreciate that question, and I recognize that my language and my uh, expressions on social media, you know, um, caused hurt to people, and I feel badly about that, and I really regret it, and I recognize this, it's really important for me to demonstrate that I can work with others, and I look forward to taking that burden, and I apologize to people on either the left or right who are hurt by what I've said. And as you know, it's not a question of being hurt. We're all big boys, and I don't see too many girls here, but big boys uh, who get attacked all the time. But it's important that we make the attacks expressing our differences on policy, and that we don't need to make personal attacks no matter what view somebody may hold. So can we assume that as the director of the OMB, we're going to see a different approach if you are uh, appointed than you have uh, taken at the uh, cap? Absolutely. And I would say, you know, social media does um, lead to too many personal comments, and my approach will be radically different. You've called Republicans criminally ignorant, corrupt, and the worst. And as you've already mentioned, over a thousand tweets have actually been deleted by you as you tried to clear, but there's still a lot that's there as well. All that's partisan. I get that. I do have a concern, though, because some of the statements that you've made seem to drift out of the partisan issues. One statement that you made about uh, people that have the personal religious convictions about contraception, like Little Sisters of the Poor and others, called them a successful political cudgel helping isolate extreme advocates from the mainstream. That one seems to cross a different line for me. So help me understand how the personal religious beliefs of some Americans could be a successful political cudgel. Well. Senator, first of all, I want to say that if uh, for anyone offended by my language, you know, I feel I feel badly about that. I think in that regard, I was more speaking to people who politicize religion, not people who believe in religion and political leaders who politicize religion, not people. You know, I'm a person of faith myself and deeply right. respect people of all faiths and all faith traditions. 
The, the context didn't seem to be about people that use religion as a cudgel. It seemed to be that the, the personal beliefs of those individuals became the cudgel. That's the part that threw me in that. So we can talk more at length on this, but obviously yeah. President Biden has talked a lot about tone. You walk into this being hired with a very, very different tone than when President Biden says that he is looking for on that. So that's kind of stood out in this process too. Just to mention a few of the thousands of negative public statements you wrote that Susan Collins is, quote, the worst, that Ted, Tom Cotton is a fraud, that vampires have more heart than Ted Cruz. Uh, you called Leader McConnell Moscow Mitch and Voldemort and on and on. I, I wonder specifically, how do you plan to mend fences and build relationships with members of Congress you have attacked through your public statements? Senator, uh, I very much appreciate that question. I recognize the concern. I deeply regret and apologize for my language and some of my past language. There are media reports that during November of 2020, after the election, so late last year, more than a thousand tweets were deleted from your account. Um, some of these public statements have been tweets. Are these media reports that you deleted more than a thousand tweets in November in advance of your nomination accurate? And if so, why did you delete them? Senator, I appreciate people's concerns about my tweets, and I've regretted them. And I deleted tweets because I regretted my tone, and I've deleted tweets over many months. I, so, but for those concerned about my my rhetoric and my language, you know, I I'm I'm sorry, and I'm sorry for any hurt that they've caused. So, so you did delete the tweets. Uh, did you delete them because you uh, believe you might be nominated for this job or another job? I deleted tweets over many months because I regretted the tone of my tweets. Okay, but specifically after the election, you deleted a thousand tweets according to media reports. Um, I, I, I take it from what you're saying today, that's accurate. Is that, is that true? I, I don't actually know, but I, I, I can completely conceded the point. Okay. And uh, I guess the, the, the question is, you know, is that the right thing to do to uh, go back and try to cover uh, what you had said, given that uh, you might be in a different position, which would be a, a nomination for uh, a cabinet level job? With the removal of more than a thousand tweets, there are still a lot of harsh partisan tweets on your account. I found uh, through my staff, there are still nine pages of tweets about Senator Ted Cruz, for example. How did you choose which tweets you wanted to delete and which ones you wanted to keep on your account? As Senator, I, I mean, I just thought of some of my language and deleted my tweets. But I would also just say again that to the extent people are hurt by my language, I deeply apologize.